What are you doing? Singing taps. Oh my gosh, people are going to skip this podcast because I think something's wrong. They're going to be like, oh, something is terribly clearly wrong. Clearly, this podcast had an issue with the editing. Skip next one. We regret to inform you that this is the last episode of the Let's Quit podcast. It really is the last episode, guys. Roll the intro. All right, welcome back to the last episode of the Let's Quit podcast, guys. We decided that we were pretty, uh, you know, like, there's times in your life where you realize you're just a hypocrite. And sadly, <laughs> this is one of those moments because every week we have been trying so hard to be consistent about the Let's Quit podcast that we finally realized the logical inconsistency with that mindset. So um, with that, we regret to inform you that this we are officially quitting the Let's Quit podcast. So in a way, we are taking our own advice. Yes. Um but it's not like it is going away forever. It's not like we are just Why are you ruining it? it? No. Mm, fine. I had Go so on. much suspense build up okay. and now Jenny's like, but don't worry, we're still going to be here. We have a pl- we always have a plan, you guys. But <sighs> yes, this specific podcast will no longer be here. We decided that the podcast would be much better if it was live. Yes. And we decided it would be much better if it was every day instead of every week. Yeah. Is this sustainable? Tune in next week to find out. (laughs) Um, But anyway, if you enjoy the Let's Quit podcast, we know you're going to enjoy the Jenny Davis Morning Show. That's what we're calling it until we can figure out a better name. Um, I like that name. I think it's simple, to the point, tells people exactly what they're going to get. Yeah. Jenny Davis Morning Show. um, Yeah. And um, that's about all we have to say about it. If you're used to the podcast, don't worry about it. You're just going to see a lot more episodes show up in your feed. Yeah. Um, If not, then... um, we are also going to make it available on just about every platform that we routinely post content for. So it should be live on TikTok, should be live on Instagram, should be live on YouTube, should be live on Twitch. That's uh-huh. a new one for us. So so um, never has it been easier to access podcast type material from us because it'll be on Instagram. You'll see the little red ring show up around our stories for when we're live. Um, similar story for TikTok and Twitch. Twitch is even more fun because it's even more interactive, I think, than both yeah. of the apps. I think it's just going to be more fun. Um, I think that the long format, us talking at you type of content, although great, um, would be improved with some back and forth with the audience. Yeah, because that's what we always say. We're like, oh, I wish I had like, you know, 15 different questions to answer from the audience. And while we have gotten questions emailed in before, it's just so much easier when you have that like live in front of you with a chat. Yeah. And so you can answer questions as they come in as you're speaking. So... I mean, I kind of made a joke of it earlier, but the reason we're quitting the Let's Quit podcast is because long format content is not really where Jenny and I shine. Um, it's it's fun for us. We enjoy doing it, but we would enjoy it a whole lot more if it was live and way more interactive like we've been yeah. talking about. So um, we're trying to figure out a way to create content efficiently, but that also takes advantage of Jenny and I's unique skills. And a long format podcast is not the best use of our time if we're going to be recording a show. Because the podcast, honestly, has taken us, I don't know, about an hour or so to produce from start to finish. From script to record to edit to upload to publish is about an hour of work for us. I would much rather spend an hour and a half and reach far more people, do far more good, have far more fun for just an extra half hour of investment. Plus... um, I can talk a little bit about this as the this podcast goes on, but we're um, we're trying to include some more daily habits that are healthier for us. Yeah. And by doing the morning show, it's going to force us to be a little bit healthier, be a little bit more responsible. So, um, if you've been a long time listener to the Let's Quit podcast, you know we're huge fans of like piggybacking off of new habits. So, um, easiest way to start a new habit is to piggyback on an old one. And so. Um, that being said, we are just going to make this new morning show a thing and then piggyback off of that a bunch of new um, productivity things that would make our lives better. So, yes, so we are quitting one thing to do something new that's way, way better and yep. beneficial for everybody. So but we're excited, though. Anyway, we had to get our mileage out of the we're quitting the Let's Quit podcast I joke. Know. <laughs> so um, anyway, that being said... Let's do a book question. I guess yeah. that's something we can do in this last podcast. <laughs> I keep saying that. I hope people realize that the show's still going on. 
That's what I tried to say in the beginning, but I well, I was spoiling so, it. So, okay, so for those of you that are freaking out because you're worried about logistics <laughs> and where to find the new show, it's going to be in the same inbox. If you're subscribed to the podcast, you're going to get the audio version of the morning show. Yes. So you don't need to do anything. It's just going to magically appear in your inbox around lunchtime every day. So yep. whether you can watch it on your drive home or you can just admit well, don't watch it on your drive home. Only yeah, listen, listen to it on, on your, your drive, drive home. home. <laughs> but if you want to watch it live, it'll be from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. every weekday morning, Central Time. And um, on the podcast, well, not even just the podcast app, app of your choice. It'll be live streamed on social media. And on then, almost every app of your choice. And then it'll be available later for download in your podcast app. Yes. So try out the live show. Come say hi. It'll be fun. Yes. That's the perk of watching it live is you can submit questions. You know, you can have conversations with other people who are watching. When you watch it after the fact, you're just kind of seeing what people said, you know, seven hours ago. Yeah. So um, I'm really excited about this. We've been wanting to live stream for a while. This this is the culmination of a bunch of different the combination. Cul Culma culminate culmination, culmination, right? Culmination, culmination. Combination. This is the combo <laughs> of a bunch of stuff we've been wanting to do. Uh, for a long time, and it's just finally a really good opportunity to um, to do all the things we've been wanting to do. One of those things is live streaming. Um, what's another one of those things, Jenny? Putting out more content. This is also going to allow Caleb and Caitlin and uh, Jared and the other guys to help us produce more content. Because if we can do something every single day that provides entertainment value, obviously that makes more pieces of content. So and more now it can forces find us it. to go to the gym every morning. That too. That too. Mm -hmm. I've been getting a little fat. You know, it's not necessarily fat. It's just unhealthy. those ice cream sandwiches after lunch. Yeah, you I'm getting used to those. Stock in the freezer with ice cream, and then you're like, "Oh, we should live a more healthy lifestyle." <laughs> Stocks freezer full of ice cream. Guilty. Guilty. Um, Anyways. Anyway, on to the book question. Book question. Now that I'm thoroughly embarrassed. Um, number ten. Oh, we got this book, 3,000 Questions About Me. We're on number 10. Sometimes the questions are deep. Sometimes they're shallow. Sometimes we make the deep ones shallow and the shallow ones deep because that's just how our brains work. This one, um, I, I don't know. This one's pretty neutral. Um, what is the quality you most like in a man? <laughs> it specifically says in a man, not in like a man. in a person. I'm pretty sure question, you know what question 11 is. All right. But question 10 is, what trait do you most admire in a man? Uh, I feel like Jenny has to go first while I scramble to think of something <laughs> funny. Uh, man, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> man. man. <laughs> I feel like it's a trait that I would like in most anybody. I really yeah. like it when people are just like honest and Okay, down this to is earth. men, gender roles. Yeah, You're talking honest. about people. When people, okay, so perfect. I can tie this up. In Houston, there is very much so like a stereotype here. It is very industrial, which is fantastic. That's why we're here. People are working really hard in their jobs, and I think that's that's good. But a lot of times people forget to like have fun. Like you even go to downtown Houston, and in all the areas where there should be like little coffee shops or little shops in the first floor of all these big buildings, there's not. It's just a lobby of the big building and I feel like people try to live this big fancy lifestyle of like you know I'm big I'm rich I have all these new cars all the time and really they're just like living in a tiny apartment somewhere in downtown Houston and are super like lonely and that makes me so sad to see because I see people on Instagram that are like living that life and I'm like I wish you would just be honest like talk about the hustle show the reality because that's what people like to see so how does this relate to men I see plenty of men doing this as well. We're like, look at me. I have this tux and I'm going out oh to dinner gosh. and having expensive whiskey and all this expensive dishes and seven course meals. And I'm like, bro, didn't you just start real estate two months ago? Like, calm down. <laughs> Honesty. So you wish people would not... Be more genuine. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So you like genuinity yes. in men. Yep. Okay. How do I rank... <laughs> How genuine do you think I am? That was not the question. <laughs> oh, that's, I'm pretty sure that's the next question, though. Oh, great. Is that what the book says? No, I would say pretty high. I mean, we have a whole channel about the background of our lives. Like, it's the, real. No, the number of people that think we're not genuine is kind of baffling to me. Like, I don't know. Like the, I we, share we, pretty much everything that happens in life. Yeah, but like we get a lot of these comments from people that are just so skeptical of everything. Like you, you saw one last night that popped up that would just like thought mm -hmm. we were lying about the businesses and how much money we've made and like yeah. 
it just a lot of effort would go into lying about something like mm-hmm. that if we were lying. Right. It's way too much work to lie about that. All the numbers we post in videos are genuinely real numbers, real sales numbers, real quarterly wrap ups, everything. I don't. I could not keep up the facade of lying. I can barely do a podcast every week. I could not lie about my yeah. sales numbers. Like <laughs> We can barely hit record enough to tell the truth, much <laughs> less fabricate <laughs> lies. But it's just, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, though, about just like the being congruent with your lifestyle yeah. and like... Um, not making yourself appear more than you are. But on the other hand, too, like just to play devil's advocate, like you need to adopt the identity of whatever change you want to make before you change it. So yep, I agree with that to too. abuse your little analogy of the, the guy that started real estate two months ago, like there is something to be said for fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. Now, don't go crazy about it, but like you got to adopt the identity of a big baller real estate mogul that makes millions of dollars, you got to pretend like your mindset has to be there before you will ever get there. Yeah. Because if your mindset's not there, you're not going to get there. You can only do what your mind is set to. Mm -hmm. You will never accidentally become rich and famous. Yeah. I think it's a balance of both. I think it's a balance of being like a a down to earth person as well as like fake it till you make it. Right. Yeah. But again, the congruency just... The self-awareness to know I need I want to be here, but I'm not quite there yet. I need right. to learn some things along the way. But that takes an enormous amount of self-awareness. Oh, that I know. Not even we have. Right. Because we're clowns. <laughs> Which is probably why it bothers me because I'm like, oh, I don't even have that level of self-awareness. I've been noticing I've been calling everyone clowns. That's been like my go-to insult now. Oh, my goodness. Have you noticed this? I have noticed that you have not answered the question about what you like most in men. <laughs> um. Jeez, now you put me on the spot. I'm blushing. (laughs) Um, I don't know. I guess one one thing that that really bothers me about, uh, I would say, this has been like personal for me, like men who hide their anger. Hmm. I'm not advocating for men to show their anger or to display it inappropriately, but for people to just like stuff it, for men specifically, to like stuff it down and not go after whatever's making them angry or solve the problem or fix it or whatever, like just there, I think that a good righteous anger when your heart's in the right place with your priorities correctly aligned, I think there's something really powerful to that. And I think that our culture really looks down on that to the point that like a lot of men I know that like they try to hide their emotions or they try to hide their anger specifically because that's not quote unquote socially acceptable. They, they want to be a nice guy. They want to be a hipster pushover that mm-hmm. drinks foamy milk lattes and <laughs> plays guitar with, I don't know, sandals. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I, I, I feel like that there's a place in the world for manly anger when your priorities are lined up. Now you got to treat that very carefully, but yeah. that can be a very powerful tool if you know how to manage your emotions effectively. Managing your emotions does not mean, okay, let me summarize and, and generalize this. I would say that emotional intelligence and maturity is as an aspect I really appreciate in other men. When I see people that have their priorities in line, they, their emotions are not they're not numb, but their emotions are handled and in check and used as tools. Yeah. That was a very long answer. Yeah. It's hard to manage emotions properly. Yeah. But I don't know. That's just something I really admire when I see somebody else portray that. Yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah. Cool. Book question. <laughs> check. Done. <laughs> something really shallow. Could have said hair. Could have yep. said six pack abs. Not us. Could have said is good at sports, but we've took it <laughs> six miles too deep. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm out of ideas. Weekly update. That's what we normally do here. Yes. Man, we're just doing a great job on the last <laughs> one here. What have we done the last week? Made a lot of boards. Yes. We're starting yes. a new batch of charcuterie boards in the shop. It's We're making like 135 walnut charcuterie boards right now. Because those are our most popular boards. We have one realtor that orders primarily walnut charcuterie boards. She's almost like, I think she almost hit 100 uh, boards so far that she's purchased wow. from us. Um, and then uh, we give people the option to choose like, oh, what do you want to send out? A cutting board or a charcuterie board? And they always choose walnut charcuterie boards almost every time, um, which I don't blame them. Walnut is beautiful, but we just got to restock yep. because we only have 10 boards left. And then after that, I've got to build um, another batch of cutting boards, probably another yeah. 130, 140 cutting boards. Um, 
which I think is significantly more work than the charcuterie boards. The charcuterie boards have more steps in the process, but they're not as heavy. They're not as labor intensive. Yeah. Um, the cutting boards, man, that's that's a lot of heavy lumber. Right. It's probably three times the lumber to produce the same number of boards as the charcuterie boards. I feel like the charcuterie boards have more steps. Do you feel that way? Yeah, they have more steps, but mm -hmm. they're, they're lighter in the end. So yeah. you're not worn out from pushing all the, you know, I mean, think about it like, our finished cutting boards are what seven pounds yeah in shipping the box. labels are always seven pounds for those and right. four and a half pounds for charcuterie boards okay yeah so like when you do 135 uh boards that are only three pounds you're not that tired at the end mm -hmm. compared to 160 boards or whatever that are like eight pounds a piece until you get them trimmed down to size so um yeah still working by myself Got, got a lead no. on got a lead on a few shop employees. Jenny's been helpful. I helped on Saturday. I yeah, was back did. in the shop for a couple hours. It was actually very refreshing. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Then we had Easter Sunday. What did we do Sunday? Well, we were trying to go to the sunrise service at church. That didn't happen. Yeah. Whoops. Um, Six thirty so. rolled around, and I was like, "Wow, this is really looking like a nine a.m. service type day." <laughs> so we went to Easter. We went to church. Um, we came home, grilled some chicken in the backyard. Just took the day off. Yeah. Sunday, really. That was really nice. Yes. Um, a much needed day off. Yes. And then um, that's really just been our week. We'd, we've been scheming this new idea for the uh, the morning show, really. That's yeah. what's taken up most of our time is getting all the logistics figured out. How do we want to do it? What platforms do we want to do it on? And we just decided to make it super hard on ourselves in the beginning and then learn to streamline it later because that's worked out for us so far. But I'm so thankful we started with this podcast because oh my gosh. one, it has been so much fun and we've learned so much, like how to format it, even everything like the, you know, the technical side, like the mics and the laptop and the mixers and the camera and yep. the editing and we would show have never, notes. We would have never started streaming like the, like we're planning to do had we not done this crappy little podcast from the start yep so. and right before we got on here we were saying we we're like do it dirty before you do it right and this is just one of the things where i'm so happy that we just started was it perfect no was it the best setup in the whole wide world actually it kind of was you did a really good job picking out these mics and stuff well, we started out with a pretty good setup um but we skipped weeks we yeah. had weeks we weren't prepared so we had a hard time <laughs> like incorporating the audience which is something we really really enjoy doing well i think the podcast taught the most important thing the podcast taught us is that we are bad at planned content yeah we are better in the moment so yeah like I don't tiktoks know. we i mean we love tiktoks that's like our platform we eat it up i just there's easy to think of content it's spontaneous yep it's fast paced so we're excited for the live show and we're still going to be overwhelmed and we're still going to be bad at it for the first six weeks. But yeah. um, hang in there and I think we'll have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. all I can think about. My brain's empty. Your turn. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much everything that we've been up to. Um, I have a couple of sales things coming up this month. Um, I'm going to do another um, like a reels seminar thing for mm. a realtor that's bought boards from us. Um, she asked me the same question. Hey, I see all your cute videos. Can you teach my agents how to do that? And then on the back end, like tell them all about your boards. Um, and so since she's bought from us before, she's really sweet. I said, yes. Um, from now on, I think it's, I'm going to make it a policy that I will do reels classes like that if they buy 30 or more boards, mm. just cause I need to get compensated for it somehow. Um, but I also don't want to sound like a jerk and say like, no, Yeah. <laughs> absolutely not. So instead of charging, what would you charge if, if someone was going to hire you to do a full on class like this? How, how much would you charge to do that? Honestly, you realize there's a whole business here, oh, right? I know. I like, know. There are so many consultants Which, who come in and teach your whole office how to use social media. Ooh, this is where there's a seven figure business right there. Just I know in you doing that. One of our favorite quotes that we constantly recite to each other is, um, what is it? Does, something can look, oh, opportunities look like distractions if you're not focused on your goal. Yeah. This is one of these scenarios where I'm like, this opportunity could turn into a massive distraction. I could turn no, this. Distractions look like opportunities. opportunities. Some distractions. Yeah. They're distractions, distractions. but you're going to think they're opportunities if you're not focused. Yeah, yeah. Distractions look like opportunities if you're not focused on your goal. There we go. Got it right. Here we go. Um, but yeah, this class, I could spin this into a whole separate thing and spend hours and hours a week just going into people's real estate businesses and teaching them how to do Instagram reels. But that is not what the goal is. But how much would you <laughs> charge if that was your business? If it was my business, um, I'd probably start out doing like... Um, it's hard, but I'd want to say like 
two grand if yeah. I really went in depth because I'm not talking say 2, about twenty five hundred. Yeah, I'm not talking about just showing up and saying like, oh yeah, this is cute. This is the concept. I would like bring in like packets for them to fill out like as I was teaching. And you'd probably would, find a way to make the make every single person who attended have three pieces of content by the end of the meeting. Right. You'd have them take a picture, do a story post. You'd have them yep. do a reel with a little audio, trending audio. And then you'd have them do another like educational because style. Because that's piece what of I tried to do with the first class, but everybody's like, "Oh, my phone's not updated to the current Instagram. I can't do reels. How do I? Do you remember your password to log back in? If you have it, no, I definitely don't." So it, def- <laughs> it takes some preparation on your end to be able to get everybody up to speed, and that's what they would be paying for is for me to teach them how to like update their phone right then, right there, so they can do reels, understanding what everybody's icons look like on different iOS like software versions and all that sort of stuff so that they could leave with like tangible. You know, I always, I always content. sort of laugh like, and I'm sure a l- some of y'all are laughing like, Oh, $2,500 for Instagram. But like there are people that legitimately have not updated their phone for like four years. And then they're like, Oh, I should really post content. It's like, Hey man, you've got a little bit of work to do between now and then. But now realizing like hearing your stories of talking to people that just like don't even have the app or forgot their password. Like, yeah, twenty five hundred dollars is a fair price for yeah. helping all of those people finally right. get to the point where they can post content. And because it's hard to trying to like keep everybody on the same step, like all right, everybody record this short video, everybody te- click on the text icon, everybody type this, everybody whatever. Um, now it's to the point where these classes, it's just like the easiest thing to tell them is say, hey, there's YouTube tutorials out there teaching you like the buttonology of exactly what to press to make a reel. I'm here to tell you what you should be posting. What videos should you be making? What should you include? What topics? What should you be making your clients feel like? How often should you post? Um, And then the rest is like, go find tutorials because they're going to do a better job than I can in 30 minutes up here. (laughs) Yeah. Again, if you were making a business system for this, I would tell you to just have like a list of different YouTube videos to reference people uh, or send people to for reference. Um, and then you're like, here's how to do it, but here's what to do. Cause yep. that's where your specialty comes in is the, what to do. part. Right. Um, there's no need to get bogged in uh, down on the how, because people have made videos like that before. Yeah. So. Anyway, so I've got that coming up. So that's exciting. And then I can kind of pitch my boards, um, after the fact, get some new leads. It's also being hosted in a, um, development building like a, a company that builds homes that I have previously talked to about boards so now I get to walk back in there and teach a bunch of their agents about reels and be like hey you remember me and open <laughs> the conversation back up about maybe doing boards for them um, and then at the end of the month I've got an event with a design firm they're just having a whole bunch of people over to their place to mingle and meet each other and I'm like it's free I'll go mingle and meet everybody I'm not a designer but I like to work with them so. why not Let's go. I mean, I'm kind of a designer. My boards, interior design, your kitchen. Well, it sounds like, according to Caitlin, you can just call yourself a designer <laughs> if you're to do anything. <laughs> Caitlin knows the ins and outs of interior design to a T. Maybe I will just call myself an interior designer. Yeah. Or Caitlin can come with me, and then all of a sudden she's an amazing interior designer, and we've got street cred. Boom. <laughs> street cred. Mm-hmm. Nice. So that's what I got coming up for sales. And uh, yeah, through the end of the month. Um, cool. Well, it's been a great episode. Yes. Um, it's been the last one. It's been real. I'm, yes. a, I'm really excited about the uh, the next show. It's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, um, last little thing, it's going to be in your podcast player. If you want to listen to it a day late, if you want to watch it live, you can watch it on YouTube. On Twi- Oh, so it's specifically the Let's Quit podcast YouTube channel. That's going to turn into the morning show channel. Yes. So uh, if you're not subscribed to that, go and subscribe to the um, Let's Quit podcast YouTube channel. because that's Which where might the- also at this point might be called depending on when they're looking it up, it might be called the Jenny Davis Morning Show YouTube channel. Yes. We'll make announcements everywhere. Yes. You'll, you'll know about it. Just but follow us on Instagram, Jenny Davis. If you want to watch it in the moment, 7 a.m. Central time on Instagram and on TikTok, and it should pop up. Or Twitch. Your, or Twitch, and, but it should pop up in your podcast player after the fact. If you're trying to figure out where to watch to give us the bestest viewership uh we would really appreciate twitch we're trying to grow over there mm-hmm. so if you're if you like all those platforms then twitch is where we'd prefer you be that's where you're gonna get the best experience yes. so we're super excited about it got a lot of work to do which is what we got to do after we 
upload this podcast. So. Thank you so much for listening yeah. to the Let's Quit podcast. It has been a fantastic time. Um, again, it's not completely ending or dying. We are just pivoting. And it's just going to have a little bit of a different feel and a different name. The Let's Pivot podcast. The Let's Pivot po- That's really what we should have called it from the get-go. <sighs> I think that was already taken. Oh, really? I think so. Oh, well. I was I really know. shocked Let's Quit wasn't taken. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's available for anyone who wants to purchase it (laughs) from us. $10,000. Yeah. All right, guys. We will see you in the first Jenny and Davis morning show. Next week. All right. Bye, fam.